Matthew 16, Jesus is speaking, and he's speaking to uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And he answers them and he says unto them, Hey, when it's evening, you can tell it's going to be fair weather because you see the sign of a red sky. And in the morning, it's going to be foul weather, you say, for the sky is red and it's lowering. Oh, you hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. I know back in the late 70s and the early 80s, America and the church world was looking for the soon return of Jesus Christ. Then it seems like we had a lot of people come along that were very zealous and they begin to set dates and do other things. I don't know if pastors are ashamed and don't want to be associated with that today or what it is or is people are people just not looking for the resurrection and the return of Jesus Christ. And uh, if you're not, then you need to read the Bible because he hasn't changed his mind. He's coming again and before he comes, he promises to resurrect the dead and to catch away a bride. What did Jesus mean by discerning the signs of the time? Well. First, you probably need to know what the signs are, and then you would need to know the meaning of the sign that you're reading. I want to welcome you. I'm Pastor Michael Joe Kearson, a suburb of Houston, Texas, and uh, we are producing, or I'm teaching here while we're shut in for this next week and a half or so, uh, 20 lessons, about 20 minute lessons, to share with you and lead you to the signs that I think we now need to look at and see how you discern them. This series of 20 minute lessons the objective is just strictly to point you in the direction of the signs I believe that you now want to discern. Here's what the topics that I'm going to be covering. I'm going to be covering about Israel and of course Jerusalem, a trembling cup in the hands of the world and the rebuilding of a third temple. I'm going to be covering the 7,000 year plan of God. There are seven appointments that he sets up in Leviticus, those appointed times of the Lord. And then of course, the lunar calendar going to talk to you about the metonic moons and how we can reconcile some differences in Daniel and Revelations. Also the eight empires that was prophesied that would rule the world when a man of peace that is also known as the Antichrist would come out of that eighth empire. And then why we needed the discovery of DNA identification. Why is that relevant to uh, the biblical needs and the reason certain technologies are needed in order for the rapture to happen. And then of course the necessity of a red heifer being discovered in Israel and being sacrificed. We're also are going to need a Sanhedrin. We're going to need a rebuilt altar and priests that are qualified to offer offerings on that altar. And then what about a Russian Muslim alliance which leads up to a battle of Gog and Magog and then the interesting find and how it may fit into discerning the times of Leviathan oil or gas fields that have been found off the northern coast of Israel and how does that have Russia's interest? And of course we'll cover the 10 signs that Jesus uh, tells us to look for that he calls the birth pains before he returns and there's a difference between us going to him and then the second coming of Christ, his return. We're also going to mention some of the points of the constellation and what needs to be going on there in their positionings and then is it a pre-trib, a mid-trib or a post-trib or middle of the week uh, resurrection of the dead concerning that final seven year period that he calls uh, the tribulation and the great tribulation and uh, we would be remiss if we didn't bring up a few of the current world events and finally what you've all been waiting for the year the Lord will return and if you need to know that I'm absolutely not your guy I've never set a date and I never will because uh, I feel like I'm a member of the body of Christ and you are as well and he's the head and so I let people know when they ask me that question and listen to our teaching they say when's he coming what year when should I get ready I tell them let me express to you if you're in the body when the head speaks our body knows so uh, anyone that thinks they know the year uh, they're a whole lot closer to the head than I am apparently this is going to be lesson one we're going to just cover some things very hurriedly try to limit these lessons to 20 minutes uh, Israel became a nation, as you know, in May 14, 1948. That's old news, but it is still absolutely phenomenal that a biblical prophecy was fulfilled 2,000 years later. I mean, after all, what other or society has ever come back after 2,000 years of disbursement? The Mayans disappeared in 600 AD. I don't see any manual or any book that's told us that they're going to come again and become a mighty nation. Or I could get into the Incas and they numbered some estimates 10 to 13 million people. Where are they today? And I doubt they're going to return. And should either one do, 
Is there a book anywhere that prophesies when, where and how they'll return and what they'll do in world politics and situations? So when Israel became a nation, that, that in itself, when written 2000 years ago, should get some people's attention. Most prophecy teaching taught that this was a prelude to the soon to be rapture when this occurred, the uh, uh, Israel become a nation in 1948. You know, it's interesting, you can look on all maps that predate 48 and there's only Palestine. There is no country of Israel, incredible. So this is an amazing miracle. Uh, so this assumption that there would be a soon return of the Lord, was that a correct assumption? Well, first off, I'm going to need to ask a question and then see if we can answer it. When we look at Bible prophecy, and by the way, when some people say they have no interest in prophecy, I can understand that because of all the strange things that have been done in the name of prophets and prophecy in this age we live in. But according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, there are 1,817 prophecies in the Bible, and the Old Testament contains 1,239 roughly, the New Testament about 578 prophecies. These prophecies are contained in 8,352 scriptures of the 31,124 verses in the Bible, which means 26.8% of the word of God of the entire word is prophecy. He tells us the end from the beginning proving he's God. So these 20 minute lessons, we're going to primarily focus on a 10 year span of time. And that is the three years leading up to the rapture, the seven years where the man of sin will reign and rule and why and how this all ties together. So we're really just going to deal with this final 10 years of the age that uh, will happen at the closing of time as we know it. So what we will now answer is the question, that question was, when Israel became a nation in 1948, and biblical prophecy teachers uh, said that, hey, this marks an imminent return of the bride of, of the Lord and him catching away the bride of Christ, was that correct? Well, the answer is yes, and in my opinion, no, or yes and yes, because both answers can be correct. When you look through the lens of God, realizing that it's been 2,000 years since the promise was made. So it all depends on how you would consider the word soon. Some prophecy teachers consider soon like I do. It doesn't mean tomorrow or the next day. So this catching away or this rapture following the prophecy of Israel in 48 becoming a nation with believers that had been looking for the return of Christ for 2,000 years, what's a 50 year span out of 2,000 years or even a 10 year period of time whenever you look at 2000 years. So when you consider this few years and this few limited number being a span of time weighed against the 2000 years since Christ ascended, it's a short time. 50 or 10 years weighed against this 2000 year period? Well, that would mean about 83 years if you consider it a short time. So if we take a 2000 year period and we place it in our 24 hour clock, one hour would equal 83.3 years. So I've been listening for the last Trump since I was born again in the water and the spirit in 1982. And in 1983, as I got turned on to Bible prophecy and all the things of the, for 37 years, I've listened to and studied biblical prophecy. It's an interest of mine. Never set a date. We won't ever set a date. I don't believe the Bible tells us to do such. So for 27 years, my wife and I have pastored here in the suburb of Houston and many dates we've seen set by sincere, knowledgeable, probably more biblical knowledgeable than I uh, in this last 37 years since I've been a Christian, not to mention the hundreds that predated my Christian walk that prophesied a year for the return of the Lord. So this teaching, if you're waiting for me to tell you what year the Lord's coming back, you'll be sorely disappointed, but I'll tell you what I am going to tell you. I'm going to give you a very studied opinion on what you need to be looking at to be discerning the time. And it's coming from a man, I may not have uh, a lot of numbers or letters and doctorates and things, but I've been to Israel many times. I've studied under many people and uh, I've kept an open mind and I'm still a student of the word, but I think I've got some things that you'll be interested in hearing. If we're the body of Christ and he's the head, trust me, he's not going to catch you by surprise either. So the question is, are you feeling what people are feeling? Kind of like whenever God drew the animals to Noah's Ark, even though Noah was already in it, and then it said, God closed the door. I think God's drawing people. I think we're closer than we've ever been to that day. 
As a matter of fact, I think we're closer right now than we were when you first started listening to the video. So uh, what we're looking at in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I'm going to read verse 1 through 5, and I think by the time these lessons are over, you'll hear this in a different way. So here's a New Testament scripture, and he writes of this season of the return. But of the time and the season, brethren, you don't have any need that I write unto you, for you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. And when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman. In other words, as a woman gets closer to giving birth, those birth pangs get closer and closer together and they get worse. And it says, and they shall not escape, but you brethren are not in darkness that that day, speaking of the day of the Lord, will catch you or overtake you as a thief because you're the children of light and the children of the day were not of the night nor of darkness. So my goal is just simply to present to you what can be known in this year 2020 about the things that the Bible says we should watch, as Jesus said, knowing the signs that we should discern. Uh, current technologies, world events, all the prophecies in scripture that lead up to this final 10 year period. And I'm talking about, in my opinion, the three years before the seven years of tribulation and great tribulation. So when I refer to the end time, understand that's what I'm speaking about as we make further progress in these lessons. This has just been an introductory lesson. I hope that uh, what I've said has interested you. If you'll tune back in, let me tell you, uh, you're going to be learning things that will really get your attention and you'll realize, wow, maybe I haven't heard of these things. But the first thing that we're going to examine is going to be that seven year period because to understand the seven year period, then you'll realize what has to happen to get into that. I wanna close with this. Jesus said, you have not because you ask not. He says, if any man knocks, and then being a father, I understand this portion of scripture that he spoke more than I certainly did before I had kids. When he said, if you being men, evil men, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to they that ask? If you've never experienced a deeper walk in the Lord, I believe it's that spirit of God that's drawing the church right now. And uh, here we are in lockdown. My hair will be longer by the time we get to the end of the 20th lesson. And my wife will be saying, maybe I could cut it. I'll say, no, 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 as she stands behind the camera. Thank you, Shirley. But uh, we just wanna invite you to listen in on these things, tell your friends about it. We're not setting it. We're not a bunch of weirdos that are hiding out in a cave somewhere. We're in the world. And we are sharing the joy and the abundance that Christ has given us now since 1982. It's a great life in Jesus Christ. God bless you. Next lesson, we'll see you.